Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I am going to be carrying out a change of the brake fluid on the front and rear brake system of the combined brakes on this VFR 800. It is a job that I've had a lot of questions about um, and people have been requesting that I make this video so here it is. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Um, as I said, this is a uh, highly requested video and this job is a much maligned job and a lot of people have said that they've had um, a lot of difficulty doing it and I get that. This is a combined braking system and it's an incredibly difficult system to bleed. It's got many, many bleed nipples that all have to be bled out in a certain order in order for it to, uh, in order for it to be bled properly. Now, um, what I highly recommend is you use a vacuum tool for this. Um, there are methods of, by um, which you can bleed the brakes um by pumping levers all that good stuff now on a traditional braking system not a problem whatsoever you'll you'll have every success on this you may do chances are you probably won't i wouldn't recommend attempting to change brake fluid or bleed the brakes on a vfr with with combined brakes without using a vacuum gauge uh, without using a vacuum pump should i say now, um, as I said in previous videos, this tool is incredibly cheap. It's £12 something from eBay. I'll put a link in the description. Um, well worth its weight. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the cost is, is nothing compared to the amount of aggro that it will save you by having this tool. So I highly recommend you pick one of these up before attempting this job. Okay, let's dig into it. Right then, first thing we want to do is we need to take the cap off the front brake reservoir. Now, um, these screws are Japanese industrial standard. They are not Phillips. Get a Phillips in there. If they're particularly tight, all you do is just strip them out. So use a JIS um, screwdriver. This one here, you will need to just tilt the bars to one side in order to get it open. Otherwise, the screen's in the way. Then once you've done that, put the bars so that they're parallel. That way the, uh, the reservoir is uh, level with the ground and you're not going to pour fluid everywhere and then remove the screws one two and now we can pull the cap off And the rubber gasket. Try and your best not to drip brake fluid onto your bodywork because, as you well know, it is highly corrosive to paint. Okay, let's get all that to one side. Right, if you look in there, as you can see, this fluid is absolutely stinking. It's dark brown. Um, Brake fluid is supposed to be replaced every two years, um, according to the service manual. And obviously, um, as you'll know, brake fluid is hydroscopic. It absorbs water from the atmosphere. And um, the problem with water in the braking system is that water will boil at 100 degrees C. Brake fluid does not. So if you have water in your system and um, you cut your brakes, because obviously they do get hot, the water will boil Boiling water creates a gas, which obviously is compressible, and that is why you'll get a spongy brake, uh, spongy brake, um, and it will effectively get in brake fade. So changing your fluid um, frequently, at a minimum every two years, um, should see you right. Right then, so we've uh, obviously inspected the fluid. We can see that it's absolutely bogging and does need replacing. The first stage um, of the process is to basically drain the fluid from, from all the lines. And the first one we're gonna do is the uh, outer bleed valve on the front left caliper. Now, what I need to do is just set up my little, set up my little tool. Just like so. I highly recommend one of these guys. They're absolutely 
worth their weight in gold. Yeah, right, okay, we're working. Right then, all I need to do, get my spanner on, get my tool over the nipple, open her up and pump. And as you can see, we're pulling fluid out of the system. And all I'm doing is I'm draining it down like so. As you can see, it's all rushing through into my little pot. And I'm just keeping an eye on the reservoir and I can see it dropping. And I'll keep going till such time as it's empty. And no more fluid is flowing. On this first one, obviously you are emptying the reservoir as well. But on each subsequent one, all you're doing is emptying the line. And here it's starting to gargle. And there we go. The fluid has stopped. And I can hear it sucking in air at the reservoir now. Okay, let's close that off. And we can remove the tool. Right then, on to the next nipple. Okay, so that's the first one done. And all we've done is we've drained all the fluid out of the line and we've taken all the fluid from the reservoir as well. So that whole line is completely empty. Next one, right front caliper. And on this one, there is only one bleed nipple. So all we're doing on this one is we're taking the fluid out that's in the line to this caliper. Crack that off and pump away. And here comes the fluid, keep pumping until such time. There's no more fluid comes out. And I can hear it gargling at the reservoir. Won't be a lot in here, it's literally what's in the lines. And I reckon we're about there. Yeah, looks good. Okay, crack that shut. All right then, on to the next nipple. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to remove this piece of trim. Uh, it's held in by three of these little clips. One, two, and there's another one just there. And to get these off, the easiest way is just to push in on the centre, like so. And then they just pop out like that. And then to reset them, all you need to do is just push them back like that. And then that's ready to reinsert okay so that's the way you uh, use these and then once you put it back into its place you just push back in on the center and it locks okay so there's three of them one two and this is the reason why i got to i'm using a scriber for this because it gives me easy access into that one and three and then that is a trim is removed and is the rear proportioning control valve all of this gubbins down here uh, as you can see is all part of the braking system <laughs> and adds a considerable amount of weight to the uh, to the bike and there is the bleed nipple that we'll uh, have to look at shortly right next thing is take this cap off the rear reservoir the rubber the rubber gasket has come with Stick that up there. And as you can see, looking in there, that is equally bogging. So yeah, this uh, this brake fluid is well, well worth changing. Right then, on to the next step. Okay, next step is to empty the fluid from the center bleed valve. Uh, oops, let's get the spanner on first. Yep, center bleed valve. Get that on. Cracker open and pump away, and here comes the fluid. Should be a fair bit. This is going to be draining the rear brake, uh, the brake reservoir. Should be able to see it going down. So it'll take a little while to get it all out. until it stops basically and we should be able to hear air being sucked in at the reservoir very shortly may seem odd that we're actually draining the fluid from the rear reservoir from a front 
caliper, but this is how the uh, this is how the link system works. Keep going, it takes quite a bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch hands. Keep going. Oops. Yeah, the rear reservoir looks pretty empty. Still a bit of fluid in the line. Pretty much there. Oh no, it's still a bit more. And now I can hear air being sucked into the reservoir. Let's pop that back on, make sure. Yeah, I think you can probably hear that air being sucked in at the reservoir, and there's no more fluid coming out of that line. And as you can see, let's close that up, pop it off. We pulled out quite a bit of disgusting dirty fluid. Right, on to the next step. Okay, having, uh, having drained all the fluid out through the center bleed nipple on the front caliper, um, emptying the reservoir, as you can see just here, that is sediment. That is absolutely disgusting. So what I need to make sure I do is that that gets a good clean out prior to me um, adding fresh fluid. So I'll make sure that I do that. Anyway, next step, I need to remove the rear wheel. Okay, got my cheat gun. love the single sided swing arm. Okay, what I need to do is I need to remove the bolts that hold the caliper onto the caliper carrier. And um, one of them is a bit awkward to get to, but I will show you uh, on the camera uh, the two bolts that we need to remove. Okay, what we need to do is we need to remove the brake caliper from this position. The reason we're gonna do that is because we need to orientate the bleed nipple into a different position. So we need to remove the caliper from the caliper carrier. And in order to do so, there's two bolts. One's just here. And the other one is here with my finger on it right now and it's a lot harder to get to and it's it's um just just forward of the abs sensor here but it's right there the end of my finger is on it right now now what i advise you to do is if you've got one is use a deep socket because a sink um, a short socket you probably won't be able to get your tool your ratchet or your breaker bar or whatever onto it so you really you could be do you could do with a you could do with a deep socket. Let me just let me get that on first. This is a bit of a swine to get into. Um, that I will admit. Now let's get her on that bolt first. Okay, we're on. Right, let's uh, crack her off. It's going to be one of those ones that will be tight for ages because it will have it will have a bit of thread lock on there for obvious reasons so it's going to come off one spanner flat at a time all right so that one and the other one is that one okay what i'll do i'll get these bolts out and then i'll bring you in and show you what we're going to do next Okay then, so now we've got the two bolts out, what we need to do is, I need to use one of them, I need to pull the caliper off the disc, bring it round like so, and then turn it over so that the two bleed nipples are pointing upwards. Then what I need to do 
is reinstall it back onto the disc so that the, the pads are either side of the disc. Using one of the bolts and one of the holes in the disc, I need to get it so that the caliper hangs on the disc and then use the bolt through one of its original mountings like so and then just tighten the get it aligned come on where are you and there's the bolt and then just tighten the bolt up just so that's it holds the caliper like so and then have it in that position so that the two bleed nipples are pointing upwards okay then the next stage what we need to do is we need to drain fluid from this point okay next stage is the uh, the upper of the two bleed nipples these are quite filthy in fact the whole back of this caliper is quite filthy I'm gonna give it a good clean before I reinstall it but this one is the next one Cracker open. Give the tool a pump. And here comes the fluid. And again, we can hear air being sucked in now. And that's that one done. Next, the center one. Exactly the same. Crack her off. And there's a dribble coming out. Not a massive amount. But there's a little bit. Here it comes. There we go. Keep it going until such time as it's empty. Keep the pressure up till there's no more fluid coming through. And I can hear air being sucked in again. Yep, I can hear air being sucked in. Right, okay, so now that is the entire braking system completely bled dry of brake fluid. Uh, that's the front and the rear and all the link parts in between. That's it completely dry now. Um, what we need to do next, obviously, is add fluid to the system and a bleeder up. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start at the beginning and work through the process in logical stages. Right then, okay, so that is the, uh, the system completely drained. Before we begin um, bleeding and topping up fluid, what I want to do next is I just want to remove well actually just loosen don't remove the uh, the two bolts for the left hand side caliper mounting just loosen them off uh, and leave them like that and um, the reason for this will become apparent later but obviously leave the caliper um, still mounted right then let's uh, let's get into the reservoirs and start filling them up Okay, as you can see, um, and as I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of sediment in the bottom. It's all been given a good clean out. And the same on the front. The front is all nice and clean as well inside uh, before we put the uh, fresh fluid in. So let's, uh, let's get both reservoirs topped up with fluid and uh, get them bled out. Okay, then keeping the bars hard to the left keeps the, uh, keeps the reservoir as level as it can be and then just top up the fluid as high as it can go so that it's not overflowing and there we go that's the front one and the rear one and 
again just top it up as much as you can so that it's not gonna overflow though and there we are right now let's begin to uh, bleed them up what we're going to do is we're going to start at the front two calipers um, and we're going to begin with the left hand side right then the uh the front two calipers um the, the method for bleeding both the left and the right is going to be exactly the same as any other motorcycle there's no there's no um there's nothing special about it whatsoever and what you're going to do is you're going to use this one on the left and the one that's in this obviously there is only one on the other on the other caliper on the right hand side so that's pretty obvious where we're going to be leave that one for now we're not gonna we're not even interested in that one at the moment it's just this one so because it's just like any other motorcycle you don't even need a pressure breather you can you can use a um standard piece of uh hose in um, a, a jar of fluid and what i'm going to do is i'm going to employ the assistance of um, a helper because that makes this job so much easier and what my helper is going to do is my helper is going to pump the lever when i say up and down um, obviously corresponding to the lever position and as they do that i'm going to open and close this valve and we'll see the fluid coming through and any air bubbles will be expelled along with it okay then so let's begin Okay, so pump the uh, pump the lever about five times, and then hold it down. Okay. Let go, and in. Let go, and in. Let go, and in, let go, and in, let go, and in. Okay, we're not getting any air out of there. So next, over to the right hand side. Okay, pump the lever about five times and then hold it in. And out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. in. Out and in one more time and out. Okay, so that is both the front lines done. Next is uh, where it gets a little bit more awkward, and we're going to be uh, having to do some things that are a little bit uh, different to a conventional braking system. But hopefully, we should uh, we should manage fine. Uh, let's just give that a little. Clean up a little bit on the tire, give that a clean just to make sure that there's no brake fluid. Okay, on to the next stage. Obviously, as you do your bleed procedure, just keep an eye on your reservoir because you don't want it to uh, you don't want it to run dry at all, because if it does, you'll have to start all over again. So let's just top that up again. And there we go, that's all good. Right then, let's uh, let's get on to the next stage. Okay, before we begin the next stage, what we need is access to the uh, bleed screw, which is just here on the proportioning valve. And to get to that, all we do is just pull these two quick release pins out. And there we go. And here is the uh, 
the bleed nipple that we're going to be working on next. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on bleeding fluid from the secondary master cylinder, which is this one just here, um, up to that point. Now, this is the this is the most confusing part of this whole process that people seem to struggle with, I believe. And the reason why they struggle with this is because the secondary master cylinder does not have a fluid reservoir of its own. So what people do is they, they can bleed the, the um, fluid from this point up to there, but then as soon as they let go of it, there's nothing behind it except there. And that's the reason why they struggle. So what you need to do is we're going to use the reservoir for the rear brake, pump fluid to this point, then get that fluid up to this point, but keep the pressure on so that when we, you'll, it'll become apparent, I'm, I may be, I may be waffling a little bit, but you'll see what I do when I do the procedure, hopefully, and uh, hopefully it'll all work out fine. Right then, um, first thing we need to do is, we need to remove both the bolts on this caliper, and then slide it off the disc. Now, because we've taken the uh, caliper off the disc, what I've got here is I've got a little offcut of uh, aluminium. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in between the uh, pads because what I don't want to happen is I don't want them to, uh, I don't want them to close up. Now, the next thing I'm doing is I'm rotating the, the caliper so that the secondary master cylinder is approximately 15 to 20 degrees higher than uh, higher than parallel with the ground that allows all the air to be at the top so when we do our bleeding process we're pushing any air that's up here back out towards the uh, the bleed nipple here that is a theory anyway so let's uh, let's get on with it and give it a go okay so for this uh, this bleed nipple it is a 10 mil spanner um, not an 8 mil like every other one um, this one's a 10 mil now what we're going to do is Basically, we're going to use the rear master cylinder to pressurize the system. Um, that will force fluid down to this point, and then it should come past here up to this point. Now, the problem we've got is, as I said before, because there's no reservoir at this point, as soon as you let it go, there's no fluid there to, to back it up. So you have to, it's, it's a matter of timing, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, capture all this in the video. It's going to be quite difficult with only one camera, but hopefully you'll... Um, you'll be able to get the idea. Now, what I'm going to do is put the camera like that and hopefully you can see everything that um, I'm going to, uh, hopefully you can see everything that I'm going to be doing. Again, I'm going to be using a conventional bleeding method on this one because it doesn't need to be pressure bled, believe it or not. Okay, right then. Now, with your the help of your assistant, your assistant is going to uh, pump the pedal and basically follow your instructions. Now, what they're going to do is, prior to me cracking off this um, this bleed nipple, they're going to pump the pedal five times and hold it down. So pump the pedal five times, please, and hold it down. Are you down? Yeah. Okay, right. There we go, we've got fluid coming through. Right, keep the pressure on. Now, what we need to do is get the secondary master, cell, um, secondary master cylinder in your hand and push it in. And we can see fluid coming out down the line. Let go, let go of the brake pedal. Okay, now, press the brake pedal in. Let go. Press the brake pedal in. Let go. Press the brake pedal in. Forces the secondary master cylinder out. Right, pedal down. Okay. Right. I did have a 
minor spillage all over my garage floor there. Luckily there was no paint. This is uh, one of the hazards of brake fluid. Okay, so hopefully what we've got now is we've got brake fluid from the rear master cylinder to this point and from this point up to this point. Now, what we need to do next is, uh, in the next stage, is get the fluid from here down to the rear caliper. Okay, right, so we've got fluid up to this point. Now what we need to do is we need to bleed the air out from this point down to the rear caliper. And the process for that is identical in every way to what we just did. We're gonna pressurize the system using the rear caliper. We need to use the secondary master cylinder to force fluid through. And then we're going to bleed at the caliper. And then we're gonna repeat that a few times uh, until such time as we've got no more bubbles coming out of the caliper. Um, obviously it's gonna be fairly difficult for me to film this because I've only got the one camera. Um, but uh, I, will, I will do my best um, to get as much of it as I can. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's crack on and see how we get on. And I should also mention that for this, we're going to be at the centre bleed screw, not that one. It's this one here that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be working on. Okay, for this next part, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same sort of thing really, except we're just bypassing the... the um, the valve in the center and we're going from the brake pedal to the secondary master cylinder to this point on the caliper now what we're going to do with the help of my assistant is i'm going to pressurize the system with the pedal here um, and then my assistant is going to press onto the push the secondary master cylinder in to the caliper when i tell when i tell them to um, and then what we'll do is we'll bleed all the um remaining air from the proportioning valve in the center to this point so first things first, I'm going to pressurize the system that you can feel the pedal go stiff. Please push down on the secondary master cylinder. And then let go. Pressurize the system. Open. Close. Let go. Pressurize the system, down. There's a few bubbles more. Close, let go. Pressurize the system, push down, open. Oh, loads of bubbles. Close, let go. Pressurize the system, down. Loads more bubbles. Obviously you need to keep an eye on the rear brake fluid reservoir. Pressurize the system. Down. Let go. Pressurize the system. Let go. Okay, this is taking a little while. I'm just gonna to top up the reservoir because it's getting a bit low and I don't want to have to start all over again. Okay, pressurize the system, push down. Let go, pressurize the system. Let go, pressurize the system, down. There's still a fair few bubbles in it. Let go, down. Let go. 
down. Okay, I think we're going to go one more. Down. There's a few tiny bubbles. One more go. Down. And let go. Okay, we uh, there is a few more bubbles in there, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to top up the reservoir and give it one more bash. Okay, a couple more goes, let's pressurise the system, down, okay there's no more bubbles coming through, okay let go, I think we may be there now, it took a little while to get uh, all the air out of that one, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a bugger, I think we got there in the end, okay next stage. Let's uh, let's work on this bit. Okay, this is actually probably the most simple part of the entire procedure. All we're literally doing now is bleeding um, air from the rear master cylinder up to this point. Um, so again, you can do this the old-fashioned way. This is uh, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, all we need to do is apply pressure and put my knee on it. Crack it off. And there's the fluid coming through. Close. Let go. Get some pressure in it. Put my knee on. I'll open her up. Close. Let go. A bit more pressure. Put my knee on it. Open. And close. Right, I'm actually happy at that. Is free of air, so I'll drop that down there. Clean up any spilt fluid around the nipple, like so. And then what I'm going to do is top up the reservoir, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay then, the next step, what we've done is we've got fluid from the reservoir to the rear brake master cylinder, from the rear brake master cylinder to the rear proportioning valve. What we need to do now is get fluid from the rear proportioning valve to the rear caliper top nipple. Um, obviously removing the air. So what we need to do is, uh, I'm going to use uh, an assistant for this because I don't want to spill fluid everywhere because it's quite uh, awkward and I need three hands really for this. So my assistant is going to pump the rear uh, brake pedal five times and then hold it down. It's down, right, okay, I'm gonna crack off the nipple and here comes the fluid. Closing it, let go. Okay, down, opening, Close, let go. Down, opening, closed, let go. Obviously, keeping an eye on the fluid level in the reservoir. One more time. Down, opening, closed, let go. Okay, I'm happy that there's no air in there. Right then. That is the rear all done. Give that a clean. What I'm going to do, but prior to reinstalling this caliper, I'm going to give all this a good clean because it is absolutely bogging. It doesn't get seen underneath the bike, so it gets forgotten about. So I'll get some brake cleaner on there, give that all a good, all a good scrub up. Um, but yeah, next stage is um, 
to bleed up the line from the rear that goes to the single center piston on the left hand caliper. That is the next stage. Okay, for the last part of the process, the very last nipple out of the seven is the center one on the front left caliper. Now what this one is, is this is the line from the rear master cylinder down to this point. Um, and what we need to do is bleed fluid through, get rid of the air, um, and I'm again gonna use an assistant for this one because obviously I can't be on both sides of the bike at the same time. Get on there, stop being awkward. Right, okay, my, what my assistant is gonna do now is gonna pump the rear brake pedal five times and then hold it down on the fifth. Are you down? Yep. Okay, closed, let go, down, Opening, let go, down, opening, and let go. Okay, that looks good. Right, I am fairly happy that we've got that process correct. So what I'm gonna do now is move that out of the way. Take my spanner off, make sure that that's nice and tight, yep. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is refit the caliper to the left fork leg. Right then, get the bexel stand out of the way. What we need to do is remove my piece of scrap and then fit the caliper back in position. Right, I'm only gonna loosely fit these bolts at the moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back when I've finished and apply some thread lock prior to prior to uh, prior to talking them up okay that's uh, that's good for now okay right let's shift that out of the way before I uh, kick it over and have brake fluid all over my garage floor right let's Oh yeah, we've got a good, good feel from the front lever. And also a really good feel from the back lever. Yeah, they're, they actually both feel absolutely spot on. Very, very happy. Right, what I need to do next is just remove the caliper off of the disc and then refit it back onto the bike. So that's uh, what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so we've got a really good feel at the rear lever and an excellent feel as well also at the front lever. They both feel absolutely beautiful. So that is the process for bleeding uh, the VFR linked braking system. It is not easy, it is not for the faint hearted. Unless you are 100% confident, I do not recommend you attempt this. Um, otherwise, you'll be left with a bike with no brakes, and you'll have to get it somewhere to, um, for you know, to a, to a workshop in order for uh, somebody to finish the job for you, and that will be nothing short of a pain. I have absolutely no doubt. Um, but having said that, if you follow the procedure exactly as I did, you should not encounter any problems whatsoever. It really is what I just did. Obviously, um, works. So if you follow that step by step, you should not have any problems. Um, all being well. Right, all I've got to do is I've got to check that both the uh, reservoirs are at the, um, the upper limit and then uh, fit all the little bits of trim and put the reservoir caps back on. Other than that, the job is done. Oh, better put the rear wheel back on as well, otherwise we won't get very far. Anyway, hopefully you found this video useful, found it um, uh, inspiring, uh, hopefully, and um, gives, you the, uh, gives you the confidence to have a go at it yourself. Now, uh, if you do need any help or you have any comments or you want any uh, you know you have any questions on the process at all then please pop, pop them in the uh, in the comment section below and i will get back to you and do my best to help you out 
Okay, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you all again, guys, for the very next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.